And here's the fight between Métis, Solomon's Nightmare and the Grand Fleet from Westlove. And as always, Norginante starts with face tanking the whole enemy fleet. I do not know what is up with the enemies. Maybe the Norginante is that much bigger than the Devil Joes. It always will start with face tanking the entire enemy fleet, which gives the Devil Joes plenty of free space and time to shoot at the enemy fleet but I do think Nerginate has most of the firepower so what I don't know but the sheer amounts of APS fire coming from Shine Horse of the Solomon's Nightmare is just devastating for the Nerginate it has already lost its superstructure but surprisingly enough all three of the main battery guns are still firing although with lesser amounts of barrels than before the innards have been gutted out and the Aegis Mark II is shooting at one of the other Devil Joes with its secondaries and is shooting at the Narginante with its primaries and the first Devil Joe finally gets shot by the Shine Horse and one volley is enough I think to take out the back turret but this thing oh no this thing is the Devil Joe that is being shot by the Aegis Mark II secondaries, so all those secondary hits, all those frag spam just took out one of the main batteries from the Devil Joe, and the other Devil Joe is being shot profusely by the shiny horse, and its back is getting a gaping, gaping hole. Look at that hole in the back. It almost feels like these ships are using aim point selection, and the back has ammo, but it's not. It's just randomly selected like that and the Nerginante has sunk two minutes into the match the Nerginante manages to completely sink and despawn itself this is not looking good for the Grand Fleet the Devil Joes oh the other Devil Joe took a massive hit to the engine compartment completely knocking all the power of this thing and this thing has started to already sink look at that none of the engine is left this thing will be sinking soon, but it manages to push itself out of the water for the last time before going down, down, down. 2 minutes 30 seconds! Two of the Grand Fleet ships are already down. Place your breaths on how long the third Devil Joe is gonna last. This is pretty obvious, guys. The Solomon's Nightmare is gonna win, unless something miraculous happens but the third devil joe is being shot at but it is kind of far away so the shiny horse is having quite a hard time hitting this due to self dispersion at long ranges but sooner or later some of the shells will hit if you throw enough shit at the wall some of it is gonna stick and if you throw that much shit at the wall a lot of it is gonna stick and it is gonna stink so that is what's happening to the Devil Joe here. A lot of shells coming in and the Shiny Horse and the Devil Joe, both of them are helping closing the gap between the Shiny Horse and the Devil Joe. Hence more and more shells per volley are starting to hit. Look at the internal damage. Just look at it. This thing is absolutely getting decimated. The last standing ship in the Grand Fleet. But what is this? What is this? The Aegis Mark II has stopped firing, maybe it is because, well, not completely stopped firing, but it has reduced its firepower by almost 60%. I think it is because the materials for the ammo processor have been depleted and it is not processing ammo as quickly as before, but the shiny horse is still managing a decent amount of firepower, which will get reduced soon. And this Devil Joe will be the longest standing ship in terms of time against the Solomon's Nightmare. But the Devil Joe coming in crossfire between the ages and the shiny horse and it is getting absolutely decimated from both broadsides how will it survive will it survive we all know the answer at this point we just all know the answer the devil joe isn't even shooting much while it's getting back hundreds of shells per minute in its broadsides but the shiny horse has 
reduce his firepower drastically all of a sudden and it is gonna take a longer while to kill this devil Joe here five minutes seven seconds in the grand fleet is already at 23.1 percent while the Solomon's nightmare is at 99.3 percent this is this is no question of the winning round but maybe the next round maybe in the next round tables my turn because if the Nerginate keeps tanking and the Devil Joe keeps shooting at Métis fleet the Sorcerer might have a chance of winning and there goes the second main battery only one of the main battery is alive now oh it's still shooting cramps what that is weird the second main battery, the one that is elevated, is acting weird. It's shooting out shells in weird angles. I do not know what's happening with that, but the lonely working. Look at the amount of shells, just look at the amount of tiny but a lot of shells being shot by the Aegis Mark II and the shiny horse is just decimating it, still decimating it with lasers this time because not enough ammo for the APS, just look at it, the poor poor Devil Joe, still is shooting with one tiny barrel left but it has lost all its mobility and its internals are just being gutted at this point. A clap to the Devil Joe though for being the ship that stood the longest against the beastly shiny horse. And down it goes soon into the depths of the sea. Like this game is going with all its weird updates. And now the second match between Wislov's Grand Fleet and the Solomon's Nightwear and as always we know what is gonna happen. The Narginate is gonna move forward and the Narginate is gonna take all of that Alpha Strike into its sweet sweet face. Which will get deformed in a few seconds. <laughs> it's, it isn't really surprising after five matches from the Grand Fleet. It's always the same thing. <laughs> Narginate just takes it all and lets Devil Joe's live. Nurginate is like the Devil Joe's mother. Takes everything on itself, lets the Devil Joe's live. But the problem here again is the Nurginate has more firepower than the Devil Joe's. So it's the strategy might have worked but it doesn't. And there there goes the Solomon's Nightmare just pummeling the shit out of Grand Fleet. It's just <laughs> by by the tone of my talking you guys probably know who won but yeah <laughs> let's just watch the slaughtering of Wislaw's fleet this is just ridiculous Mages, I don't know what the Solomon's Nightmare is made of but no matter how much shit you throw at it even if a lot of that shit sticks it doesn't do much damage to the Solomon's Nightmare ships, it must have very thick armor, and yeah, the 
shielding is very tightly packed, but I think it's mostly the very, very thick armor that does it. And the volume advantage in some cases as well. So, that is that. Solomon's Nightmare versus the Grand Fleet. <laughs> and the Shiny Hearts just moves closer to one of the Devil Joes. Starts pummeling on the Devil Joe with its other broadside and now switches to this devil joe completely but decides to shoot at something else the shiny horse cannot make up its mind on who to shoot it's just weird <laughs> and shooty shooty pooty pooty shooty <laughs> laser eating up the superstructure of the devil joe while the shells are going to the way of the other devil joe i think because the Nergina, they might have be starting to sink, but I don't think so. Yeah, the Nergina is not sinking, but it's in the middle. It's there. It's there, doing its jolly thing, taking all the firepower, returning 30% of the firepower it takes back. And soon enough, the Nergina will have no firepower left, even though it still keeps shooting in those tiny, tiny barrels. And Shiny Horse is one of the few ships in this tournament that actually switches target based on the threat or maybe the HP. So as soon as the Nerginate goes below a certain threat, it switches to another target. So that's target prioritization done right on the Shiny Horse and the Aegis Mark II as well. And they have the ability to shoot at multiple targets as well. So that is a really nicely built ship, I gotta say. And I fast forwarded the fight a little for my sanity and you guys' sanity because who likes watching the same thing again and again? I already did this three times because once for recording, once for speeding up the footage and once for commentating. So I am losing a bit of a sanity today here. So let's fast forward this thing. And as you guys can see, again, the Grand Fleet is having a hard time against the Solomon's Nightmare who has taken 3% damage while the Grand Fleet is sitting at 48% HP, so this is not even a question who's gonna win. It's just... Moving on to the fight between Lucaya's Turtle Gang and Alnair's half-working fleet on the other side of the brackets of the semi-finals for the primary bracket. And there goes all Alnair's missiles to the space from all the decoys. And there we go. Tiny Joe is already been decimated, partly by Olnir's fleet and partly by Lucaya's own fleet by ramming and stuff. God damn, that Tiny Joe misbehaved Joe, it either betrays its own fleet or gets betrayed by its own fleet. And one of the Navaras has taken a lot of rockets to the face and these things. These allegiances, they're just, they're just, let's not look at them. Let's forget about them, let's forget they exist, they are just there to drag out the fight and make me lose even more sanity. <laughs> but uh, these fights are quite enjoyable, especially with Lucaya's fleet absolutely deleting every rocket and shell being fired at it and Novara. Your face just got melted a lot, but the Novara's back turret keeps firing white sperm-like looking shells and it took a hit, a cram hit to the face. Crab hits the most dangerous things against all their fleet because AP cram shells and Lucas fleet just shot one of its turtle. <laughs> wow, just look at that. Lucas fleet has a lot of friendly fire going on. And yeah, for the Navaras, a cram hit is much, much more devastating than a lot of APS hit. I don't know why. And this turtle, turtle buckles have lost its back turret and is moving. And is moving forward to ram one of the Novaras. And while this Novara still keeps firing, it's quite damaged, to be honest. It's just the burst fire turret in the back. It's, it just spews out shell for breakfast. But some of the shells are getting reflected by turtle buckle shielding. Pretty high strength shielding, but pretty sparse shielding. But at that angle, 
The shields are working quite nice. And turtle buckles. He just deflecting all the shells, shooting the Novaras with cramps. And the shells very inaccurate because barrel got damaged, the APS got damaged, and there goes the Novara into the air. Will it be KO for the Novara or will it start it started shooting again? Goddamn, the Novaras don't look like it, but they are quite tanky, and one of the cramps here have gone, and one of the cram barrels here have gone as well. Turtle buckles moving towards the Novara. I don't know why. Is it a ram craft? No, it is not. But why does it do ramming behavior? I have no idea. It just keeps moving forward. It just wants to eat Novara's behind. It's just... Yep. It just wants to do a surprise butt sex, but... It's not fast enough to do the surprise part. But it's fast enough to do the butt sex part. <laughs> the other Novara quite healthy, but... Oh, not quite healthy. The front turret has been blown up and duplicated itself <laughs> in the process. I don't know why that is happening a lot with the tournament mod. After the new update, I have, of course, switched back to the better version to do this tournament. But whenever a turret blows up, it just duplicates itself now. <laughs> I don't know why, but that isn't an advantage really. So yeah, it's it's not a problem. Lucaya's turtles taking damages here and there, and the turtle buckle finishes off one of the Novara by ramming it and is moving towards the second Novara. Looks pretty bad for Allner's fleet at 60%, and Lucaya's fleet has surprisingly taken a lot of damage, sitting at 90%. The turtle buckles have lost a lot of firepower, and this Novara, as always with the Novaras, the front gets blown up, but the back turret. It's pretty nicely protected. It just keeps shooting. It just keeps shooting until the time the Novara actually despawns. So, yeah, that is that. Let us see what happens. Fast forwarding to Novara's butt. As you guys can see, the turtle buckles have managed to close its gap between the Novara and it's shooting its butt pretty profusely i don't know what's up with the turtle buckles but it seems to be very fascinated by novara's butt and wants to eat the butt it's just, no it's getting oddly sexual here but nonetheless the turtle buckles makes contact with the novara and keeps pushing it why the turtle buckles does this behavior i don't know i don't know what's going on through the turtles maybe it's mating season Maybe it's not, who knows, only the turtle buckle will ever know. And the Novara being lifted off the water by the turtle buckles. Now what is going on in here? What kind of ritual is this? Is this a demonic ritual? Is this a turtle mating ritual? Is this the sexy butts of Novaras that... Okay, I, I'll, I'll stop with that. <laughs> this, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't resist myself had to make those comments but nonetheless the turtle buckles keeps pushing the novara up and novara cannot do anything about it the novara can't even shoot it because it's out of his shooting range because the novara might just shoot itself at this point if it starts shooting that and i do think that turret only has aa mount so it cannot really shoot downwards and the turtle buckles going under the novara for now these things as always have gotten their firepower blown off and the other uh, allegiance, allegiance is still floating. Three more allegiance still shooting, and the flak cannons of the CIWS are being used to shoot at the allegiances right now. So that is good for the Kaya's fleet. This thing has lost its laser firepower and turtle buckles doing its thing, lifting the Novara up. Maybe the turtle buckles will drown itself while doing that because it looks like the turtle buckles is gonna nosedive into the water while the Novara keeps alive. It's rolling the Novara though. So what is gonna happen? What is gonna happen here? Rammy Ramisher behavior going on in here. Pretty kids, close your eyes. This is intense. <laughs> what is even going on in here? That is just weird at this point. <laughs> I 
I have no comments. I just... Oh, the Novara is too damaged and sinking. Well, the Turtle Buckles is not below 80%. Not below 80%. So it is not considered sinking. So good move, Turtle Buckle. Sinking the Novara and staying yours. Keeping yourself alive. I think the turtle buckles once the Novara despawns will come above the water. Above the water it goes now. Yes. Turtle buckles. A dirty move. Did a dirty move. Sank the Novara. And it's coming back up. And now only the allegiance has lived. Like, wow. It's, it's, it's Turtle gang is just going close up to these allegiances and... <laughs> blowing them up now look at these these are hard to hit they're so small they're hard to hit but anything that hits like this flag gun is devastating to them yet they're hard to hit and henceforth will drag the match onwards and make me lose even more recording sanity isn't that just nice <laughs> Just look at how much these matches drag on, guys. Just look at how much. The allegiances are very hard to kill. Five minutes have passed since the last cut. And the turtle buckles and stuff. And oh, thank God. The match has been over. With the win for Lukaya. And this is the second match. Which ends at 11 minutes. I forgot to press record on this so I spent 40 minutes recording this I forgot to press record but nonetheless as you guys can see uh, this time in 11.20 minutes Luca has managed to win so onwards goes and now finally after a month ladies and gentlemen welcome to the grand Finale between Lucaya's Turtle Fleet and Matey Solomon's Nightmare. They are exchanging a lot of shells within each other. Most of the APS shells are coming from the Solomon's Nightmare while the Turtle Gang is pretty aggressive this time, shooting a lot of rockets. At the Aegis Mark II, the Turtle Gang is ignoring the bigger shiny horse and going for the Aegis Mark II while the Turtle Buckles is drawing all the fire from the Solomon's Nightmare henceforth getting damaged pretty nastily and I do think Turtle Buckles does have the most firepower within all the turtles so that is a bad hit for the turtle fleet and as you guys can see Tiny Joe as always is of no use Aegis Mark II for the first time in the tournament has taken a significant amount of damage getting below 90% what is this sorcery for the first time in so many battles the Solomon's Nightmare is actually taking damage let's just say Lucas Turtle Gang is a worthy opponent for this fleet that did not get damaged through the whole battle and finally has a fleet to match its firepower and getting damaged a lot look at that Aegis Mark II and look at this this has already started to stop firing and the turtle buckles absolutely getting face melted by the immense amount of firepower coming towards this from the shiny horse just look at that turtle buckles just like that has been incapitated and it will not be firing for the rest of the match while Aegis Mark II it's not looking good for the Aegis Mark II. It has taken a lot, a lot, and a lot of damage. It's all up to the remaining turtles to win the match while Turtle Buckles just keeps tanking the lasers while the Shiny Horse is intelligent enough to direct its firepower towards the other turtles who can still win this match by their sheer firepower and the Aegis Mark II has started to bob up and down into the water because it has been damaged it has been damaged heavily Turtle Gang has one advantage over Mady's fleet it has even more armor than Mady's Solomon's Nightmare look at that just like that 
Aegis Mark II has lost 90% of its firepower and all that remains is the shiny horse but the advantage of shiny horse is it has not been touched up until now. The shiny horse is an absolutely at 100% HP and at this point the turtle buckles has been too damaged as in sinking. What will happen? What will happen? Both fleet have lost one of their ships. Aegis Mark II, while not despawning, is pretty much firepowerless at this point, except the tiny secondaries. But Lucaya's fleet is looking a little bit grimmer because this turtle just lost his firepower. It's not shooting the lasers, the CIW has just stopped working, and the other turtle that remains does not have that much of a firepower. So, what will happen? What will happen? Will only the rockets from the turtle gang be able to win this tournament or will Matey's Solomon's Nightmare be victorious because the rockets are still focusing on the Aegis Mark II instead of this what's this thing's name shiny horse how did I forget that name for a second there and the turtles are being gutted they're gutted out of their shell both of the turtles are heavily damaged and they just are not firing anymore, but Aegis Mark II just might sink at this point. It has taken so much firepower and the shiny horse rubs its behind against the island. Maybe its back was just a little itchy, but the shiny horse deserves it. It has been fighting all day long today against several fleets and it needed a butt scratch. Shiny Horse shooting a lot of shells, not nearly as much shells as it shoots at the beginning, but still a lot of shells against the turtle army. Five minutes in, and the scores looks like it is moving towards who is gonna win and who is gonna lose. Lucas Turtle Gang is at 46% HP, while Mark II Ages can be considered out of this match, and the other turtles is sinking as well but shiny horse is at perfectly fine health and shiny horse will be sinking these turtles soon enough and fast forward again on the match it took three minutes for the shiny horse to shoot down the last turtle because this thing has ridiculous amounts of armor and the shiny horse gradually reduces the firepower and the Aegis does not have any firepower left so it takes a while and finally this turtle becomes too damaged the first round victory goes to the Solomon's Nightmare from Matey and Timo so two people sleep yeah volume advantage firepower advantage people advantage I guess it's just a very nicely built ship. Only two resources were spared on building of the ship. And Aegis Mark II still floating even though completely and utterly obliterated of its guts. And the second round begins with the same thing in the front. Lots of cramps and rockets from the turtle towards the Aegis Mark II while Shiny Horse being untouched, shooting at the turtle buckles because I don't know, maybe it's the fattest one, maybe that's the one with most weapons, but everything likes to shoot the turtle buckles. And the Aegis Mark II has been damaged, so it's just lobbing shells high up now. I don't know why it's doing that, maybe the shells are low velocity, but it's loving the shells pretty high up in the air right now. Pretty high up in the air. Maybe the Aegis Mark II just got damaged from that initial flurry of rockets and stuff, but look at how inaccurate the shells are. Look at how they are. The Aegis has indeed taken 7% damage, and those rockets are proving devastating for the Aegis Mark II. But the turtle buckles have taken even more damage from all the shells from the shiny horse. This is not looking good for Lucas' fleet, but. The Aegis Mark II is moving in the line of fire of the Shiny Horse. Will it take friendly fire? Or will the Shiny Horse... Yes, the Shiny Horse has managed to not shoot the Aegis Mark II somehow. Not shoot the Aegis Mark II somehow. Repeat, except for a few laser volleys. But if the Aegis went in front of the Shiny Horse and it shot 
with the same power it was shooting, the Aegis's backside would have been absolutely shredded. But the shiny horse has avoided that, and the Aegis has outrun the shiny horse's fire laser beam of APS death and destruction. So it is safe for now. And the shiny horse finally switches from the turtle buckles to one of the other turtles, probably Sunny Silmara. Yes, it is shooting at the Sunny Silmara. So the Sunny Silmara just stopped shooting its CIWS for some reason. And I do not see any more big firepower from that turtle. The laser turtle has lost his back turret as well. The back turret is the CIWS turrets are usually the first to pop off on these turtles and the turtle buckles is usually the bravest going the closest to the enemy and if the enemy has enough firepower getting absolutely shell melted god damn commentating for 40 hours straight 40 minutes straight I mean gives you lists in your th tongues Sounds weird, but <laughs> that is what it is. And the Aegis Mark II tries to nosedive, but somehow stays afloat. If it would have nosedived there, it would have started despawning or not. I think it, yeah, it's still at above 80% HP, but it would have been a lot nicer for Lucas Split if the Mark II Aegis did start sinking, but nonetheless. The turtles have again in under four minutes have lost most of their firepower and it's just free real estate for the Solomon's Nightmare fleet. Just shoot, shoot at everything. Shoot at everything. I don't know why the laser on this turtle just keeps shooting after taking a few shells. I mean stops shooting after taking a few shells. My brain is really turning into a mush right now. I don't know why. <laughs> I just cannot speak comprehensible English right now but as you guys can see that laser did not shoot for once I don't know why it just stopped shooting maybe it gets damaged internally from all the hash Solomon's Nightmares fleet is shooting and Aegis Mark II again loses most of its firepower mostly from the EMPs and then by the cramps Lots of torpedoes eating up the Aegis Mark II. It would have been much, much easier for Lucaya to win, though, if it switched after the Aegis Mark II has lost most of its firepower. If it switched to the shiny horse and did the same what it does to the Aegis, just blow up all the turrets and switch it. Rob the enemy of the firepower, then you have 15, well, 10 more minutes to lightly nibble at the enemy until it dies but no the turtle gang just keeps shooting the Aegis Mark II and now the match is just gonna drag because Aegis Mark II doesn't have much firepower the shiny horse I think has used almost all of its ammo and is not shooting with as much might as is if it was Is there a way to remove tongue twistings in normal speech? I would like to know that. <laughs> Fast forwarding five more minutes and Lucas fleet only has the Sunny Silmara living while the Aegis Mark II has taken a lot of damage in the meantime. Little by little by all those small small torpedoes. 69% on the Aegis Mark II while the shiny horse is at 99.9% so it will just keep shooting at this thing until this thing just despawns or gets too damaged and there goes Kaboom on the buttocks of the Sunny Silmara. Sunny Silmara, you will go down soon if you do not do anything, repair yourself, but the Sunny Silmara doesn't have much firepower left, so it will be going down soon.
And Sunny Somera finally bites the watcher and is too damaged and is despawning. So the victory goes to the Solomon's Nightmare by Matey and Timo. You guys shall get a cookie for winning the tournament. I promised a cookie. I will deliver a cookie. I don't know if it will reach you fresh or rotten, but a cookie shall it be. One cookie. <laughs> so that's the end of the tournament well at least the primary bracket the main event of the tournament the secondary bracket where all the losing fleets will go and two more new fleets that could not submit in the time frame of the submission will come in as well but for the main event the victor is again Solomon's Nightmare by Matey Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tournament. There will be upcoming tournaments if From the Depths gets his shit together, packs its shit in a bag and gets it together. It doesn't matter what bag it packs it in, but as long as From the Depths devs get their shit together into a small place, another tournament will be happening. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the tournament videos. It has been going on for a long, long time. And honestly, I'm very happy to finish with the tournament at this point. I am Darko and I will be, after commentating for so long, we'll go to sleep now. <laughs> See you guys in the next one and until then, brawl safe.